Hello, welcome to, to this last video. So with this one, we're going to close all the overshed uh, uh, tutorials. So this will be just best practices and, and a few tricks I want to show you, to share with you, because you already realized the overshed meshes are very powerful, but you need to be aware of a few things in post-processing or generating the meshes or when, when running a simulation. So maybe I already mentioned some, some things in the previous tutorial, but I want to summarize everything here. So what we see now in the screen, these are two simulations run with Fluence. So I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks with Fluence and then something with OpenFlow. But most of them are, are common between both software because we are talking about the, the method and not the implementation, okay? So what we see here all is two solutions with uh, with fluence, so one solution is the whole cap minimization and the other with no whole cap minimization. Okay, so this is minimization, no minimization. So if you, you compare this solution with the, with the one with OpenFone, you will see that OpenFone will get something like this. You see that we have similar solutions with the same method. So the problem that you see here, that kind of there is something going on in the background that is not in phase with this finer mesh. The problem here is as we don't have that minimization, the interpolation is done in a coarse mesh. So look at that, I will hide this one and that one. I look at what is going on there. So we're interpolating the solution from one level to this one, but this level is two coarse. So you have that numerical diffusion. Instead, in this case, we don't have that numerical diffusion because we don't have that stencil behind the, the refinement patch. You see that is the minimum stencil that has been minimized, so there is less numerical diffusion. So this is one of the advantages you use using the whole cut minimization. So if you're running fluent, uh, highly recommended to use it. By default, it's enabled and fluent. It's running up and fluent so far in this version. It's not implemented. You can do something I have managed to manipulate the mesh, but it's really tricky. It's not something practical that you will like to go to to, to do to use to, to, to do some industrial cases. And the solution here will be in this case with no minimization is controlling Okay, we'll be controlling the refinement rate. So it's something similar to the grow, uh, growth rate from the walls. So see here that we have a refinement rate of two between one level and the other. So probably the refinement rate of two is too high. So the solution here will be going something about 1.5 or 1.3. Uh, see, I would say that it will work fine. My experience 1.5 will fail. Will, will, will work fine. So it will mean that your background mesh will be much finer, but remember also you can do some stretching to control that. So that is the only way so far that how you can control that, okay? So if you if you know, for instance, in this case, you know the width of this wake, what you can do is having a wider refinement zone, okay, it will be the other solution. Uh, something else that I wanted to share with you about. So this is all uh, Fluent, okay? Let me go to, to Fluent, okay? So now we're in Fluent, and remember that in Fluent, you, you have the text user interface. Uh, I also want to remind you that you, if you don't have Fluent, you can go to the website and you can find the academic version. So here in the website, Academy and if you are in the academia, you can get it from free. If you are a commercial user, you will need a commercial license. If you need it, don't hesitate in contacting us. In the in the description below, you will see the link. We work with a with a technology uh, technology partner that offer also HPC services. So if you are looking for HPC software, uh, uh, computing time HPC HPC services, and also uh, on demand license, just Content out, so we might be able to help you. So, we're here in Fluent. I will show you something about another technique that exists when working over some meshes, which is uh, color meshes. Okay, something that this, uh, this, uh, this overset here that I have this mesh is a little bit complicated. I have four meshes, I will show you what I have here. Okay, so I have a background, okay, then have a component mesh. So see what is going on here is that we're going to cut a hole using this one 
and then, that, then we have another one. And this is something a little bit tricky to deal when you have walls intersecting walls. Usually that is not desirable, but Influent is also enabled an auction that will let you deal with that. But to deal with that one also, you need to add here a color mesh, a mesh that will bridge this mesh with this, this one when you are cutting here. In OpenFun can be also done, it's a little bit tricky. I have been able to do it with simple meshes. I will show you how to do it, but you will get any idea when working here. So look at that, the color mesh, when I put it here, this is what it's going to do. So you have your original mesh here, and then if you don't use those color meshes, you will have a lot of mesh leaking here going here and you don't want that so what you do is you just put this color mesh okay and this color mesh will bridge everything and will let you okay connect this wall with this other all, all, other wall so here here everything is a wall a wall will be intersected so at the end of the day we're going to have kind of a piston here okay we're going to see that Geometry. So the advantage of use, use, using this one is that, for instance, imagine that you would like to move this geometry here, just kind of the piston is moving. So as you put this color mesh here, you will be able to handle that. If you don't have the, the, the color mesh, that is not possible to do it. It's a little bit tricky to get the idea. We're going to see how, how to work with that. So everything was generated using the workbench. So we have five meshes in this case. So remember that you load everything. I won't go in, into details. And okay, remember to assign all the overset regions. So we have four overset regions. Remember overset regions can intersect between each other. Walls can intersect overset regions. However, it's not desirable to have walls intersecting walls. Okay, they can overlap, okay, but intersect and you need to do this specific tre uh, treatment so let's do it so we are going to enable here overset interface okay so chance edit let me do that. this one let me create one a new one background mesh and then all these meshes will create the will be my component meshes okay so remember here also something very powerful in open fund that in influent that you have here the uh, text user interface here you can access some comments that you don't have here in your normal menus so there is a few commands that i would like to access so for instance you go to the fan and then overset okay you can put use the first letters overset you have options and you have many more options here. So for instance, I can use verbosity. So I would increase the number of information that is given me in the, in the screen. So it's already in two. Then you can also choose minimize overset. So by default it's minimize, but if you will want to disable, you put no. Okay, so I always recommend that you have seen this result that it's always desirable to, to have it. And then Another good action to use here is render receptor cells, this one. Okay, by default, uh, Fluent won't show you all cells. If you want to see orphan cells and everything, you need to enable this one. Okay, so always a good idea to enable because by default it's not enabled here, already have it. And you can play with more options here. Okay, so you can enable the experience options. And let me go one direct to the back. Quit. And here you have all these options. So here, for instance, you type list, you will see a list okay, of all your component meshes. So remember that we have the interface and you have all the meshes. And see that here you have the grid priority level. Okay. So remember here is also very important. It is the equivalent to the stone ID in OpenFund. So in this case, it will be important to define this one. Okay. So in here you have some statistics. So let's initialize this mesh. So as I put here, initialize, I will have my mesh. Okay, here there are no retros, no offer cells, and I will show you the final results. So if I go here, okay, overset mesh, and look at what we have. So by background mesh, look at that. We cut the hole here, then using this one, okay, so see that this one, we have the wall, 
which will be probably this one. See that we have the wall there. And then we have the second component mesh, okay? And then there is another wall associated to this one. And then look at that, we have this hole here. That is the color meshes that we use there. We put the color meshes and those color meshes have some walls associated, which will be that, those, and this one. Okay, see that we have the wall here. And I don't recall that one. Okay, the external one, I think, yeah. So see, this is the goal of adding that color mesh. We are going to bridge that one. So it's very helpful to use these color meshes. Okay, so you can see also this is not an ideal mesh. You see that the difference is too much, you know, the different from one to the other, to, to the other one, but it's just that's an illustration. Something also that I want to mention, imagine that you have boundary layer also here. You can work with our set mesh with no problem. But again, it's the same idea. As you have here a quartz boundary layer, a mesh for the boundary layer, and here a finer one, you're going to add a lot of diffusion. So when generating the mesh, you should follow this standard practice. Try to have in as much as possible similar aspect ratios or refinement uh, expansion ratio between different levels. Okay, so this is what we have. And let's see in contours here that we got access to the informal over cell type. So let's plot everything. And this is what we have by level. So let me go just background level. Okay, so I, uh, I don't recall the influent two is resector solving. This is interpolation. Okay, that what we don't see here minus two is dead cells or those that you are not solving, and minus one are all orphan cells that we don't have here. So see that we have all the information in our mesh. Okay, so it's a little bit complicated how everything has been done but see that the wall that we have initially here that it was intersecting everything was removed thanks to the fact that we're using this bridge mesh here the color mesh okay so i just want to to show i wanted to show you how to work this one as it's very powerful okay this is the way that you will link different meshes when you have very complicated uh geometries so Remember, text user interface, many options available. So you type check here, you will get these messages. So we don't have orphan cells, so no information here. But there is another option, no, it's not contained there. So as you go into solve set, and we have over set. Here we can also control the interpolation method. So remember that between different measures, we interpolate the solution. So contrary to some people will tell you that that interpolation is conservative. Okay, it is not conservative. Okay, it is only conservative you have fully machine meshes. Okay, in this case, this is the idea of over set that you are going to relax that constraint so you don't match it, match the meshes, but you interpolate. Okay, so over set, it is, uh, kind of a multi-block mesh, but a little bit more over relaxed where you don't need to uh, match the interfaces. And this is how we control. So interpolation method, you have two methods, inverse distance and least square. Personal experience, least square is more accurate. And you see that is the one that by default uh, Fluent is proposing. We have access to these methods also in open form. So we have the least square, also inverse distance weighting, and there are two additional one, ones. So I will show you what to set, it, set up those methods. So I think this is always fluent. Okay, a few tips and good practices that you need to follow. And let's move to open phone. Okay, so I have open phone somewhere here. Ah, also, I want to remind you that you need to uh, to know the limitations of the solver. I already addressed this, but remember, go to the documentation and see limitations. Okay, so there are many things that you can do and many things that you cannot do. In general, you can address the whole physics, but there are small things that you are not able to do using our set matches. But let's say that most of the physics you will be able to address using Fluent as well as Open Fun. So I will go to Linux, okay? So I would show you first the case, the same cylinder, just to show you the visualization. Here we have the color mesh. 
but the cylinder case I would like to show you I have it here is cylinder moving okay no it's not that one should be three component meshes this one so I will, will open here so remember overset capabilities are only available in the open from developed by uh, ESI CFD, okay, and I'm using version 18.12. So let me launch Parafi. Already have a solution pre compute the tutorials and previous videos will address everything. So basically, I will show you the same mesh as with the one that we have here, okay. So this will be corresponding to this case. So we have this mesh, and let me see velocities, and this is what we have, okay. So remember. So you recall this one, you have some diffusion here, exactly the same diffusion you will have in OpenFund. But so far in OpenFund, we don't have the method, the minimization of the whole cutting uh, implemented. So what you can do to solve this problem is just get a finer mesh or increasing this one to avoid the diffusion from one to the other level. Something also important working in Padafons, view. for instance, if I do a coupling here, Okay, see what I get. And what I'm getting here is just simple the interpolation from levels, okay? So if I want to start to separate my mesh in different levels, I should not proceed in this way, slicing and then using threshold. It's better to first do the threshold, okay? Extract the zones and then do the slicing, okay? So here in this slice, you are basically uh, projecting everything for our all levels. So maybe you will be able to avoid this one, you won't see this one, if you have very fine meshes, okay? Because it will be a good interpolation. But in this case, there are different solutions of when Parafon is interpolating, you will see that error, okay? So see that if I plot here the cell value, I don't have it, okay? This is it, your right, and actually this is your right solution, okay? What you see here is interpolated solution. So be careful, some people will think that this is an error in the numerics, and sometimes it might be related to different the different meshes that is two quarts, the background mesh. But it's basically related to to Parafone and the interpolation down here. So to avoid this problem is you want is you don't want to plot the cell values, you want to use the continuous one. Remember first extract cell zone the zones. Okay, so let me go here, enable zones. Okay, crash. Let me reopen. Okay, threshold. Okay. So everything and extract some. So in this case, we have three zones. Remember to extract the cell value, not the interpolated value. So cell zero, which is the background one. See that we have background. So here we're interpolating everything coming from all the component meshes. I select again and extract cell zero. I want to extract zone ID one which is this one, and again, this is everything coming from component mesh, this is the in there, into this one, and this one is interpolating into the other one, and you do the same to the last one, which is this one, okay, and you have your cylinder and you plot your solution. So now at this point, you can start to do this slicing. So if I slice here, you don't you won't have that import that problem with interpolation as in the previous case okay so be careful with that sometimes some people i have seen some people have come crazy oh well, it's wrong my solution i'm playing with the nomadic it's just something about how you are plotting and how you're using part of it the same will happen in inside if you're using inside you will see a similar effect okay so be careful with that uh that being said let's move to another thing so let me go something about, this is also general fluent and open phone, 
Okay, so when dealing with moving bodies, I think also we already addressed this, but this is extremely important to control the time step, okay? Not look at your CFL of the flow, or the flow look at the CFL of the mesh, okay? Don't move really fast that mesh because you are going to miss some information of the interpolated cells, okay? So I will show you that example. I have something already prepared here. will be clean place okay so this case is also you you have then available so we have here the case we generated the mesh the traditional mesh so i want to show you also that it's possible to have uh walls intersect and oversect zones oversect zones intersect and oversect zones what is tricky is you have walls intersecting walls okay that you need to be careful we show about the color, the color meshes and also overset component meshes going out of the domain At one point this over will, will explode that it is in general fluent and also open front so let's run here move dynamic mesh okay no function object Okay, here I have. So we're running the case and let's see what we have here. So it's just the kinematics. And see that at this point, it is already, it's not crashing, but it's telling you that you have no, no donor. So this is an orphan cell, okay, in an open front. So if we, we visualize the solution, let's see what's, what we're having, okay. So let's visualize cell type. okay so this is what is happening in this case this is interesting we're moving too fast so look at that in the next iteration see that also we have interpolations points here and this is not good this is a problem when you move you have a time set extremely large so if you check your cfl number of the flow probably will be less than one but that is not the restrictive one. The restrictive one will be the CFL number of the mesh. How fast is that mesh moving? And as it is moving too fast, you will have problem in your interpolation. And sometimes you can have orphan, orphan cells. But this is not the problem here, just to show you. Overset sun in, intersecting with overset, no problem. And you will see a wall intersected with an overset, there is no problem. And you can have many of them interacting it's no problem. So if I keep playing, okay, see that this is when diverge. And the problem here is that the body is going outside of the domain, okay? So I have a wall intersected. In this case, it is intersected, a patch is going out, okay? But remember, if you have a wall to deal with walls, you will need to add a collar to, if you want to have that cut, that as the one I show you in Fluent. But interesting here, if I go a few times, let's, let's see, Look at here. So we are solving here, everything is okay. But the problem is when we go close to this patch. And the problem here is that is this is also a good standard practice because we're interpolating and we need to construct an instance. And it's recommended to have at least four cells between patches, okay? Between wall and this patch can be a wall as well. Okay, it is highly recommended to have four cells there to have a good interpolation. In this case, you see that the mesh, everything becomes invalid because we don't have those four cells. So if I go one time step back, look at that, we have the four cells. This is also valid in Fluent and probably any other uh, overset mesh solvers. You need to have a minimum of cells between patches, okay, to deal with interpolation. Otherwise, you will have problems. Okay, that we have here. So have that in mind, okay? And I want to show you how to avoid this problem also that we're having here in the interpolation. So as you might guess, to avoid that problem, there is just changing the time step, okay? So if I come here and I reduce it, okay? One order of magnitude. Okay, ta, 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 ta. let me raise it down. So I will run a few time steps just to show you. But you'll see that you, here we are going to have uh, a great improvement in the solution, a large improvement in, in our solution, just by reducing the time step.
Okay, so we have some time step, the mesh. Uh, let me add those types. And if I press play now, see that now we have a very nice transition in our solution. And this is what you should aim. Okay. Again. So you should aim for something like that, a sequential change from time state to time state of your interpolation cells. Okay, so it's not like in the previous case that when changing from one time state to the other, you have many interpolation cells here. It's probably also you will have in some cells in dead cells inside the, the body. In this case, by controlling the time state, see that a very nice sequential change. Okay, and this is what you should aim. Be careful, okay? Sometimes you might be running, you will see that the flow CFL number is one, but that one is not the restrictive one. The restrictive one will be the CFL number of your mesh that I will show you how to compute that one. But as a general rule, will be half the CFL of the flow. So if you flow if one, your mesh will be zero five. Okay, that, that or contract your mesh will be two, so you will need to have your your time set to get something lower. Okay, this is a, a kind of a high rule, but there that you can compute it also in open fund. Uh, so that was about that. So just to show you something about the dictionaries, the numerics. So remember, in general, also with fluent and open fund, numerics will overset measures because usually the bodies are, are moving. So I don't see any reason why to use overset measures if the bodies are, are still are not moving. But if you want to do it, do it. But the advantage of the overset is bodies are moving. And when bodies are moving, moving, you will have a strong instead of instantaneous acceleration that you need to use small time instead and a robust numerics. Okay, so a few things that I want to show you. Okay, so if you want to add the box switches, okay, this is how you do it. And depending on the method for the interpolation, you can add the debug as this. So if you are using this method, just put this one and as you put two, you will get a lot of information on the screen and, and information to post process, fields to post process. Do not forget to add this library and highly recommend it. Use the adjustable time step, okay? Then if we go to SB skin, everything is exactly the same. This is a good numerics. What is new here is the overset interpolation method. So here's where you set the method. So see, remember, in inverse distance influence, we have it here also. But also you have least squares and cell volume weight, okay, that you can use as well. Uh, personal experience, the developers in OpenFund, they recommend this method, inverse distance. Personal experience, I have found that least squares is better. Probably it is a little bit more competition expensive but it will give you better results okay but it's up to you do your benchmark and then when you move to sb solutions okay there is nothing new here probably remember that always you need to add this for the cell displacement okay this is also related to the dynamic mesh dictionaries and everything i won't go into details but always i add it and then what is new here okay in your pimple entry you will have all the centers. So if you download the tutorials now, you will see that sometimes you see a D. A D means that this is the default body, okay? So for instance, momentum predictor by default, the implementation open when you have it on, the correct fee by default is off. And I always recommend you put leave it off because it will give you problems working with our set meshes, okay? In our set meshes, you will have this switch, okay? dedicated for overset meshes. So this is one you only use if you have a closed domain. Again, I don't recommend you to work with closed domains with overset meshes. Also Fluent have problems and as you see limitations and best practices, they would mention something very specific about uh, closed domain. So in general, it's not a good idea, but if you have a closed domain, you can add this switch or it's even better just take one cell and leave that one cell, a small cell, far from where things are 
happening, leave it open so in that way you can compute your reference pressure. And then this is a good numerics, okay, since I'm moving, so you need to do some corrections to stabilize your solution. So I like to work like this. So usually I prefer something like I, I work like this, one, three, two, okay. One outer corrector, which is a piece of standard piece of pressure velocity coupling and then three correctors, okay, and two, but this is related to the mesh quality. So you sort of, you can put one, three, one, three, one. And then you have here these flux additional ones. So this is the one where you put it and you will get information about your current number, okay? So this is related to overset meshes. The others are standard uh, switches in for, for, for open phone that I won't go into details. Um, that's all, okay? That is about the numerics and SV skin. So uh, now I want to show you how to set up the color mesh in open phone. So first, remember you need the meshes. The meshes are generated in, in Fluent and imported here. So I will show you, I have the steps here, the mesh. Okay, so I will allow also the, the, the four meshes and then up to you to, to stop the case. So basically, in my case directory, let me clean whatever I have here. Okay, this is interesting. So I will convert all meshes, enter conversion, okay. And then I will put all my meshes in the background mesh. Okay, so I enter and see the background convert the mesh, but before merging meshes, something very important. Remember that we need to assign those uh, overset patches. So go into poly mesh boundary, okay. And I have overset patches here. So this one is overset, overset, okay. This, I don't need it. And important, remember, we, we want to group all these patches into one single patch. So we need to use a common name. So I like to always call it overset patch and overset patch, okay? So then when I merge everything into the background, everything will be grouped in one single patch, okay? That is the equivalent to creating the interface in Influent. So now we move to the other mesh, CN2, Okay, component mesh two, we do the same. Overset patch, overset. I don't want that. It's the one you can leave it, but I don't want it. And overset patch as well. No. Overset, and now we go to background, okay? So in background, we already have the mesh, okay? And I will open and see what we have. So we have two patches. Remember, usually back in the background mesh, you don't have overset patches. You see, we don't have it here, but we want to put all that information for the other meshes in here. So how we do this, we need to create kind of a dummy patch. So remember, if I do it, if I start to, to merge all the other meshes, this, this, and this in here, we'll put it at the end. But remember that there is this problem that is highly recommended to have it at the beginning of the list. So how do we put it at the beginning of the list? If you want to put it. You can merge it in the normal way, there is no problem. So actually, let me show you that. So if I come here now and I do like this, merge meshes, okay. Reload, see that everything is merged here somewhere in the middle. It's not at the beginning. So all those patches, we put it here. But what, how do I do to put it at the beginning? Okay, and that is very straightforward, okay? So what we do is that we need to create a dummy entry, okay? So now I will have four patches. My dummy entry will be at the beginning the name, guess, overset patch. So remember everything that we want to group together, we put it here, type, it's so always overset. Okay, delete this, and faces, zero faces, okay, and it start from this number, 
okay, we'll start from the one next to this one, okay? See, so if this one was 10,000, you will put here 10,000 zero faces, and then when you do the margin, open phone, the library will deal with everything and will give the right number. So now if I go here and I merge everything, voila, let me check here and see that no problem, everything has been, mer has been merged, okay, here, and you have everything organized again, okay. If I type check mesh, remember it will detect the regions, then I will do the initialization. So we have five regions. So let's visualize what we have. Okay, let me do the initialization. Also set fields. Okay. Paraphone. And this is what we have. Okay, so we load all the meshes, okay. So we have background, this one around here, this one here, and the color mesh. And we have everything divided by zone. So you can come here and again you can add thresholds here and you can start to separate everything by zone. So you have zone zero, okay. Then you go zone one, this is one, zone one, over there, we want zone two. But at this moment we all we only have okay, so it will be zone three, okay, and grouping everything different zones. We have here the color and in some four, I think I have this one. So remember also here the order is important. So different orders will give you kind of different uh, cutting, whole cutting. So you need to play, this is the tricky part here. You need to play a little bit with all the different combinations to get the right one to get what you want. So at this point, we are ready to go. So I will use over simple phone. I will run just one iteration just to get the the whole cutting, okay. Apply. Now we have access to the cell types, okay. And if I put cell types here, this is what we have. So see that we have the interpolation, everything. So it's not like the one we have in, in Fluent, but remember here, so that this is particular case is a little bit tricky to get exactly the same as Fluent. But simple cases, you will be able to add this this color, or probably you avoid to have uh, personal experiences like open phone does not work very well as you have walls intersecting walls. They can overlap, like in the color mesh, and you have no problem. But if they are intersecting, it's not a good idea. So probably here it's better if you get this this one just perf perfectly overlapping this one, and then you put your colors. So here you proceed in the same way. Mm -hmm. Let me try sounds. So this is someone, and see that we have the hole here. Okay, so someone works fine. You have the perfect hole there, and then you can move and get the other regions and see here that in reality we should have all the interpolation here this is this is okay but this is not okay here okay so there is some problem in the ordering or probably the mesh also is not the ideal one two i have nothing okay i have the two colors here Okay, so two, remember it's not computing the solution, but it is solutions by computing in another level. So that's something that is strange. Okay, and this is the last level. Okay, so I think this was the last part that I wanted to show you. Okay, the case is a little bit tricky work a little bit. I will allow the case in the link in the description. You will see the formations and then you can play a little bit around with this. So I have nothing else to say about overset. The only, the, my final advice is be careful with the time step. Remember here the restrictive part is the mesh velocity, how fast that body is moving, which is different to the CFL number of the flow. And then do not use overset meshes if you don't need them because you will pay a additional price when you deal with overset mesh. But as you are dealing with very complicated uh, kinematics, body motions, I think it's the best deal, okay? It's the best way to work. So thank you very much for your time and see you next time that maybe we're going to start to, to deal with uh, turbulence modeling.
Bye.